Hello everyone and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm Will Schick, Director of Product Development for Atomic Mass Games. And I'm excited to be here with you today. Today we're going to be painting some uh, fantastic Legion stuff. I have a Yoda. Uh, so if you've been with us either at Mini Stravaganza last year or a couple other times, we've painted Yodas before. Uh, this Yoda will be different from every other Yoda because we're going to paint them today. And we're just going to have some fun. I'm going to do some color mixing. We're going to mess around. I'm going for a very typical, like classic Yoda color. Um, so we're going to be looking at a lot of different like off-whites with some browns and some ochres in them. We're going to try to get that more olive skin tone that we see, uh, especially in like the Empire Strikes Back, not so much the animated series or when he's like CGI'd in the prequels. So we're just going to try to make a really grungy kind of uh, classic Yoda look. We're going to see how it turns out and have some fun along the way. So with that, let's go ahead and flip the camera on to Yoda and get going. Or I guess you could turn the camera onto the paint palette because we have that now too. And I got to get some colors prepped. Um, so some of the colors that I'm using here today, I've got a couple of chimeras. So I do have my array of chimera pure pigments. Um, the ones that are on my palette currently is I do, I do have the thalo green, which is right here. I have the black, I have the white, and I also am using the yellow ochre. Um, and then supplementing those, I have a couple of different scale colors. Um, I did pull out some sherwood green from scale, which is right here. I have Thar Brown, which is kind of going to hopefully perform the base coat of my cloak. Um, and then I have White Sands to work as a highlight with that. And we're just going to freeform mix and have a lot of fun and mess around with it. So, uh, mm, 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 mm. all right, here we go. So I'm going to start off with the cloak, uh, the little cloak and the pants. So I think I'm going to start with my Thar Brown and I'm going to just take a little bit of this yellow ochre. I'm going to mix that in. There we go. So I'm looking, I'm looking for a little bit more yellow on that thar brown. So pushing it a little bit more to the ochre state. And I'm doing this because I'm planning on washing everything with a sepia tone and then I'll highlight up. So if I go a little bit on the more yellow side, we'll get those warmer tones. And that should give us that kind of old worn cloak kind of feel that we want from everything. I think that's pretty good. Add a little bit of water to that just to stretch it out. And I think we can get going. And we'll just play around with our colors here. So, feels pretty good. All right. Let's start with that. So, we're just going to hit everything here. So his little Yoda pants, we'll do the outside of the cloak, all that. And even though we're going to want these to be kind of subtly different, we want to get some different tones and stuff in there. Starting with the same base coat is fine because we can control how those colors turn out. Utilizing our shade washes, utilizing different highlights. I'm going to do everything but the belt because as I recall, the belt is like a darker, deeper brown. So that'll be fine. The other benefit to this is that I can be a little less precise at this stage because I'm going to utilize my shading step, my highlight steps to like pull everything across. Paint sideburns and a goatee on this Yoda. Oh, we could maybe give him like a Yoda five o'clock shadow, but we'll see as we go along. We'll see how far we get, how we're feeling as we get to that face. But I'll have to think about how I would even do Yoda style stuff. So this first layer, like all layers, we're going to probably wind up doing two thin coats over this. Classic standard base coating. I'm not really utilizing the Zenith highlight for anything here. Uh, we're not doing like a wash technique or anything. We're just going to go in and we're going to start probably two brush blending in our shadows and our shades. We'll use a little bit of washing. We're just going to like kind of have some fun arting this guy today. And we're gonna see how far we can get. Um, if you do wanna check out kind of more of a standard approach, um, the mini extravaganza videos from last year where we covered Yoda in the fall, so um, are a great resource. We did a couple of different paints we did a hangout where we just kind of went crazy on the Yodas. 
and our head of studio demanded that there be a pink Yoda, so we painted pink Jam Jam Yoda. That was really weird, but it was fun. Uh, I also did kind of a intro hobby 101. I used Yoda as my kind of foundational, like how to get started painting. And part of that, um, what's really nice is we just talked about kind of basic approaches to get your Yoda painted really quick and have them look really sharp in one go. So if you are curious about, you know, painting in general or how could you approach this Yoda a little quicker for like tabletop and make him look like the Yoda we all know and love, um, that'd be a really great place to start. And I'm going to use the hairdryer her summer, so I'm just warning you that it's going to get loud. Mute me. Hair dried. All right. Uh, many of us did watch a lot of the Adepticon coverage over the weekend. Um, I did not. I had family stuff going on the whole time, so I unfortunately missed all the streams, but pretty much everyone in the dev department, um, and I know Dallas Kemp also kept a really close eye on everything that was going on. So I got all the secondhand reports. Uh, Seems like it was a great event and everybody had a lot of fun. Really excited to dive into a lot of the data and feedback that came out of that. Big events like that are really, really useful uh, data points for us. And we do like to pay attention, digest, collect, look at stuff. Um, we actually were having a dev meeting this morning where we were discussing a lot of the Adepticon stuff and between Legion and X-Wing and a little bit of Armada discussion, everything that's going on. So we'll be watching for kind of all of the big third-party write-ups and discussions. And it's a great place to get a lot of aggregate data from the different events that you can combine with playtest data and everything else. So they're super, they're super great and useful. So. Uh, I gotta put on my glasses so I can read this. <clears throat> All right. So we're just gonna finish out. It looks like I'm gonna be doing like three smooth coats here because I really want this color to be uh, fairly solid. It's not as important in those shadow areas as much, but having a nice consistent base coat it's just gonna make everything else work so much nicer. Make those blends and colors really clean and neat. Uh. All right, any update on battle forces? Yeah, there, uh, we did do our previews for those. They're still in there completion stages, so we have them currently in the layout right now. Um, so once they're all laid out, from there they go off to the localization partners so that they can be translated in all the different languages. And after that, they get approved by our fabulous licensor, LFL, and then they will make their way to BK and Summer for dissemination to all of you all out there. Uh, so a little bit left in the process to go, but uh, we're definitely closing in on it. If I had to put a little bit of a guesstimate on, you know, when the final release and stuff will happen, um, I would say, you know, Ideally, you're going to see all that stuff before Mini Stravagan, like a little bit before Mini Stravaganza launches. And that means that you should have the opportunity to utilize them in your global campaign games as well if you want to. So, like every Mini Stravaganza, I can confidently tell you that there will be a three day event that goes alongside the convention for folks who want to play games and do stuff with us. 
rules for that should also be being posted in Earlier this time around, we're doing, so we can't make sure that everyone has some good forewarning and you can do some planning and stuff. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of this ochre. I'm gonna mix it into this. I need to do a little bit more brown though. So, nope. I'm gonna just grab a pre-mixed brown rather than worrying about my own. Walnut, sure. Why not? Walnut. Geez, Summer, did you just fall out of your chair? You that excited over there? All right, here we go. Uh, we haven't really discussed the peg and socket system uh, for... The X-Wing ship's new, for those asking. All right, let's put this over here. Let me work this down. Do that, I really wish I had a little bit. Mm. Mm. Maybe we'll try some of this red leather. So I've grabbed, what did I grab? Uh, walnut from scale 75 is this color right here. Now I'm going to throw out some red leather as well. And I'm just kind of trying to mix a little shade that I think will complement what we got going on here. It's a little redder than I wanted, but it's okay. I think we can work with that. Uh, Okay, let's give that a shot. I think this will be okay. All right, so, and then I might cap this off a little bit of sepia tone. Do, do, do. Okay, so with that, I'm just going to start coming in. I'm going to hit some of these shadows. And we're just kind of, kind of, Get in there and we're gonna work on blending out some of these shades. Just creating some nice definition on this cloak. So I'm using two brushes. I've got my blending brush. I've got my applicator brush. I keep my blending brush in my mouth. This is a very... <laughs> Good technique for doing some quick and easy blends. Dallas actually used this as a studio painter. So, so it works at all levels. You can be kind of rough and simple with it like I'm being. You can be really precise with it. No matter how you use it though or what goal you're aiming for as you start to become really proficient at it, which I will admit right now I'm not the most proficient at it. Uh, it can make your painting goes so much faster and you get so many nice and smooth blends. Because you're doing a lot of that on the miniature and you're stretching those colors over. It's kind of creating those smooth transitions. So you think about where you want your color to go and you take your brush, it's a little bit damp and you just stretch the paint over the areas and create a translucency. So you kind of think about similar to how a wash or a glaze works where you're applying those colors over. Oh, summer's in here. Something's happening. Something's happening. You're just pushing the paint and stretching it over those areas that you want. It's also a great way to erase mistakes if you make any. There's a lot of really cheeky things you can do with this. I always keep that secondary brush, even when I'm not trying to two brush blend necessarily. Um, having that secondary brush like we talked about as like an eraser is super good as well. So it can really make painting 
whole new enjoyable experience. And it's pretty fun because it kind of works like magic. The more conscientious you are about your blends, the smoother, the better the results, all of that stuff, but we're not too, too concerned about that. Just looking for those nice contrasty points. So like I'll blend less where I think those shadows would be really heavy. Let more of that shade color exist. And then we can get really down in the nitty gritty. We can add a little black to it, just going. Here we're gonna have a lot of shadow, so we'll just kind of like dive into that brown. And then again, just go back, kind of blend it out. The other thing too is, you know, you can, if you want, really just lean into brush strokes and sloppiness and kind of treat it a bit more like a canvas piece of art where you're not as concerned with like super realistic smooth blends and it's a bit more expression and artsy. Basically don't be afraid of, you know, what you would quote unquote call mistakes because they might make the finished piece just that much more fantastic and unique interesting but we're really looking right now to just dial up that contrast in the shading and the shading is going to be the biggest workhorse so I'll probably spend the most time on it so I just kind of work it around and then I might grab a little bit of black just to cheat and do a really quick darkening it up Using potentially a blue because I have a little bit of that red in there could do this trick too, like a nice deep navy or something. But I think I'm just gonna, because we're not trying to get into the worthy or the Star Wars painting competition or anything like that, we're just painting for fun and for looks. Do it like this. All right, I'm going back to my hairdryer, Summer. Back to the hair dryer. Dope. Okay. Now I think we can get in there. <clears throat> Start mussing about with these stronger shadows. So with this I'm just Really looking to define those really deep folds in the cloth. Add that extra little bit of contrast. Those folds will really pop once we come back in and start adding all those highlights. And again, just utilizing our ability to use that secondary brush to pull out and blend our colors so I don't have to do as much work during the highlighting phase as you might normally. So I always really recommend, Dallas has done a lot of different tutorials and stuff throughout his career on two brush blending. I'm sure we'll convince him to do another one at Mini Stravaganza. It's a topic that he's very passionate about. Um, absolutely worth the time to practice and learn. It's such a good tool in the toolbox for stuff like this. It's probably not necessarily something that you're going to want to do on a whole unit to this level. But even when batch painting and kind of like knocking out a unit 
a little bit of two brush blending can save you a whole lot of work else places. So all right. Oh, we're arguing about pizza in the chat. It's gotta be Tuesday. It's gotta be a great day. Do you like pizza? Uh do you mean lasagna? Yeah, lasagna or pizza casserole. Those are the only two ways to, de those are the only two appropriate terms. Yeah. I like deep dish. It's, but I, I mean, for me, if I'm like, I'm in a pizza mood, I'm not going to the deep dish. That doesn't mean that it's not enjoyable, but no, I, I definitely consider it a, uh, I definitely consider deep dish pizza, like true Chicago style deep dish pizza to be, to be a casserole or a lasagna. It's, I need to be able to eat, like for me, the definition of pizza is a food that I can eat one handed while driving, like super important. If it requires utensils, not quite pizza for me. I have to be able to fold it up. Oh, I love, there's nothing better than folding pizza. It's like all the goodness of the pizza, but twice over. You're just doubling your, you're just doubling your enjoyment right there. Pizza folder. I like how you said that, like all of a sudden, I'm one of those people. You're like, oh, you're a pizza folder? Do you also eat the crust first? No! In fact, most of the time I won't even eat the crust. The crust is utilitarian. It exists for one purpose. That's to deliver the good stuff to your mouth. There's, there's no reason to go into blank crust. That's just wasted room for more pizza. Okay. Pretty happy with this going on. You can, if you dip the crust or if the crust has like stuff on it, you know, like it's like got a, a baked Parmesan or maybe it's been rubbed with like some delicious like olive oil and salt or anything. But if it's just like, if it's just the sad end crust, then no, don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. Just eat more pizza. I always think of it as like, well, pizza is pretty unhealthy, but if I don't eat the crust, then think of all the calories that I'm saving on those empty carbs. That's how I justify eating pizza so much. Like, well, I didn't, I don't eat the crust. So like, you know, five pieces of pizza is really like three and a half, right? Right? That's how it works. Agree with me, Summer. Agree with me! I'm going to pull out my Josh right there. That was my Josh impression. No, you haven't, you haven't been around Josh enough then when he like cares about something deeply. So that was spot on. Okay. I'm very happy with that. Let's go in, grab some of this white. Grab a little bit of this ochre. Grab some of this. Pick up a little bit of our highlight color. That's pretty, pretty good. Let's see if that's. So the other thing with the two brush blending method is that you can do your shadows and your highlights, especially with a bit brighter of a color than you normally would. Your progression can be a little less because you don't have to worry about the different stages. Because you're going to create those like middle stages of highlight and shadow with the two brush blend. If you're stretching your paint across the surface right. Um, and that's what really makes it speedy compared to like traditional layering or feathering or anything like that is the fact that you get to, you kind of get to cheat, quote unquote cheat, those, those middle highlights and shadows because you're just going to create them as you stretch the color across. I do think that's a little too much on the white side though. Not the light side. It's okay if it's on the light side, but it's on the white side. 
slap a little bit more ochre and stuff into it. Come back in, blend that out a little bit. You want to be really, depending on, you know, what you're going for for your final look. I always like to be a little carefuler on my, a little more controlled on my highlights than my shadows because those highlights are really gonna, they're really gonna be potent, they're really gonna pop. So usually I feel like less highlight is typically better for this kind of look that I often want. So we're just going to keep it pretty well controlled. And it's very easy to go back and add more highlighting if we want to. Harder to add less highlighting if we want to. So. Smooth that out. Let's keep working that. So we can pull this line right here. And then towards the bottom, we can just blend it out a little bit. And then towards the top, we can blend it out. Another really important bit when you're doing this two brush blending is make sure that your paint has enough flow in it. You want a little bit of working time on the paint. Um, you can achieve this using just plain old water most of the time. So if you thin your paints to kind of like your normal working consistency, take it a little bit further than that. So you have that little extra time to apply the paint and then enough time to go back and blend the paint out and work it a little bit. The other thing too is that keeping these highlights minimized and blended out a little bit will help with our ratty, rugged nature because we want a little bit of a grungier look. I know that technically this Yoda is for Galactic Republic, but I really want to do something that is evocative of his appearance in Return of the or Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi 2, although we don't see him too much there. So I'm kind of going for a bit of a dirtier, grungier look. Like he's been living in this cloak. He doesn't have a Jedi dry cleaning anymore. There's no dry cleaning service for him, so. And he's just really got the one cloak. I kind of wonder if, uh, I wonder if like being a Jedi Padawan is similar to being like a rookie in a professional league. Like, do you have to bring Yoda juice in the morning and he's just never happy with it? He's like, I expect my Republic times and my Preki fist promptly at 6.53 a.m. Padawan. I'm missing all the good food discussion. I'm kind of sad about this. Why aren't you updating me, Summer? Well, here's another question. I'm ready. Is a beef Wellington a sandwich? Ooh! Is it a sandwich? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to give the Dallas Kemp response. Uh, I would counter with, do you, do, you per, do you believe that a pig in a blanket is a sandwich? I believe that a beef wellington is a pastry. I feel like if you, but you have to, like, if you were going to eat a beef wellington for a hand, you have to go with it. You could, you could certainly eat it with your hands, but that's why I think it's a pastry. It's a cake. You can eat a pastry with your hands, though. You've eaten, I'm sure you've eaten, you know, pastries whose names I can't remember now. 
I think it's a pastry. Yeah. I mean, a meat pie, come on now. It's from that same family. Is it not? Yeah, see? Now you gotta start thinking about this. These are the important questions here. All right. Pretty happy with where we are on our highlights on this little Yoda. Just gonna strengthen these up a little bit more. Toss in that. Just add a little bit of these like spots. I'm not gonna blend. Blend that out because that was a mistake. Whoop. That was a huge mistake. That's okay. Erased. All right, so. Kind of a nice, yeah, you can see, you can see all the brush strokes that are going on right now, but I don't actually mind this. Um, partially because again, I'm not looking for those smooth, kind of classic miniatures games colors. I really want this guy to kind of look more like a painting. Um, so one of Preston's amazing pieces of art from his artists, what we see on the command cards and stuff. So I'm letting those brush strokes really work for me. And I will uh, give credit where credit's due. I'm really doing this because of a conversation I had with Dallas Kemp, who was, of course, watching all the Adepticon painting stuff. And we had an interesting conversation that I hadn't really thought about before, which was, you know, uh, the style, the modern style and kind of thought process and artistic theory behind all of the amazing miniatures painters that are out there and what people are kind of doing uh, at a higher level. And one of the things you talked about so much was, you know, way back when, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, anything like that, you know, every, every so often art kind of evolves and style evolves, you know, in the 90s it was really crazy, bright, cartoony kind of colors. There wasn't a lot of realism in most miniatures painting, especially like non-historical miniatures painting. And then that gave way to a much more, you know, slowly gave way to a much more realistic style where it was influenced by historicals and real colors and all of this stuff. And it became a little bit more like a natural video game kind of feel where you had you had that lived in grit and realism and more less saturated color but everything was still very clean you know your blends were really tight you couldn't see the brush strokes the idea was to make it kind of almost photorealistic it was sort of the goal and now there's really been this move and this explosion as miniatures painting has kind of taken more stage and more and more artists have come to it and it's kind of evolved in this art style where it's, you know, a lot of people are approaching like painting on a canvas. And so those more classic things like utilizing the brush strokes, utilizing the roughness of the paint and all of this stuff to make what would kind of like a classical canvas painting on the miniature itself has become the thing. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of like mess with that today. So I'm not looking for those perfect like classic smooth blends you know, I've got my brush strokes in here and my different color fades, and it feels a lot more like, you know, to me, and the goal that I'm going for here, is that it feels more like a painting, but a painting on a three-dimensional canvas. So I'm just kind of like playing with that idea, playing, playing with that approach. Uh, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do for his under jams. So I'll think about that. I'll go back a little bit to my darker color here, because I want, I want to deepen that just a little bit because that should be in more shadow. There we go. I'll take care of this. Got a little too bright on the collar there. there. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to think about what color I want to do with those jammy jams. Mm. Plaid? Plaid jammies? No, no. No. That's, that's a different stream. That is a very different stream. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some ink and I'm going to just very quickly wash this down with a little bit of sepia. Just grab a little sepia wash and this should give us a much different tone. So we'll pull us a bit more into that yellow, yellowy ochre where we have the more uh, neutral brown from that walnut. It's a bit more of a flat brown. So let's give us some warmth. I don't know. You came around the corner. You scare me, Summer. Can you get a oh, I mean, you can stand over here if you want. But I make you uncomfortable. No, you don't. Makes me uncomfortable when you get up from your like little command station and start walking in and I'm like, oh, what's happening? Something's broken. Nobody would ever know how you came in if you could just Yeah, but then what was the fun of that? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do some skin tone painting while we let that dry. That's way too green. Grab some of this ochre. Well, you're, I thought you were going to change to the palette because I'm mixing color. How am I supposed to know, Summer? Gosh, I get yelled at for things. Not even my fault. You betrayed me. You betrayed me. All right, that's pretty good. I like that. Let's, let's just apply it and see what happens. Oof, what? I mean, it's it's kind of like mucusy green, I guess. It's very olive. Yeah. Plus his eyes are closed, so I don't have to worry about the eyes. Oh, it's all coming together. All right, so this is just gonna be our base coat again. So just like the coat was, I wanna make sure that we get a nice solid foundation and then that's where our blending and everything else will come in to play get the hands and don't forget that his feet are also visible try to avoid making him look like he's right out of the gremlins movie we don't want that though that's probably i mean how crazy would that be what if yoda was a mogwai Look, all I'm saying is that, you know, E.T.'s planet is part of the Galactic Senate, so it's super possible that Gremlins is actually, you know, Mogwai or where Yoda's come from. Or maybe they're like distantly related or something, who knows? I like the idea of, like, calm sage master yoda going back to his family reunion and you get that you get that gremlin from gremlins 2 the leader gremlin where's the glasses and he's just like oh uh no he's the one who like goes on the, on screen and is like he talks with the british accent kind of he's the one who drinks the smart juice mm -hmm. so yoda's just like sorry master windu to my to my family reunion, I must go. And then he gets there and they're just all like crazy. It's like the bar scene, because he's the only one who's like self-controlled from his Jedi-ness. That'd be amazing. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to grab a little bit of black. I'm just gonna create a bit of a shadow here. And kind of go in, do some shading. 
it under the cheeks, the eyes. I gotta be shorter for this because where the camera is and where his face is does not work nicely for me. Did you cut my mic? That's just rude. You did. That's true. I do remember that. I do remember you just being like, enough's enough. We're out. We're done. You know, what makes it hurt even more, Summer, is that you've never done that to Dallas. You don't just cut him off. I am the problem, child. Yet another movie that I really loved as a child. Problem Child 1 and 2. I wanted it, I wanted his bed so bad. That crazy, like, spaceship bed. It made sounds and noises. It had a control console. I was like, this is amazing. Uh, it is. It is way too late. I... Uh, I have a I have a very loving partner now, and she supports me in a lot of stuff. But I know where my limits are, and I don't think she's interested in galactic bedroom adventures. That's just uh, that's not that's not a that's not a thing we share. It's not a life we're gonna live. Nope, no new spoilers today. Uh, we talked a little bit about Battle Force uh, status and when folks can kind of start expecting to see those in the wild. Earlier in the recap is, is that they're currently being laid out with graphic design. They're gonna go to localization partners so they can get put in all the fantastic languages that Legion is localized in, uh, and then once that work is done, they'll go for approvals on licensing, and then once they're approved on the licensing side, they will go to BK and Summer, who will release them into the wild, finally, for everyone to use, and our goal is to have them out before Mini Stravaganza, so that everyone can choose to use them or try them out in the global campaign that's coming out alongside that event. And of course, they'll be completely legal once they release. So if you've got an event or a tournament coming up and you wanna go crazy and give them a shot there, you totally can. Because as we've talked about before, they are 100% tournament legal. There's no special kind of game mode or anything with them. They're just brand new. Force construction rules that you can use for all your games of Star Wars Legion. I know next week, Dallas uh, is gonna be filling in for me. I was gonna be painting one fallen dark lord who took over the crime syndicate, Maul but he's gonna be painting the new Shadow Collective Mall next week. Uh, curious to know how he's gonna approach that, what he's gonna do there, I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic. I will be on a little family vacation, so I will not be here next week, but I look forward to coming back the following week and getting things going. All right, got our green all shaded down. Use a little bit of my cloak color. And we're gonna create a little bit of a green highlight here. Whoop. Um, the Battle Forces will be available in retail um, as part of new starter sets that folks can pick up and jump right in. So if you haven't dove into one of the factions and are looking for a great place to start, the Battle Force starter, maybe your Huckleberry. Um, 
but you know, for everyone who already plays and has a great collection of stuff, we wanted to make sure that you could just dive in and start playing. You have to buy stuff that you already had or didn't need. So they'll be releasing first as the first opportunity for folks just as a plant and play option. And then there will be some retail products that come out starter set wise that will make diving into the amazing game of Star Wars Legion. Hopefully convenient, fun, and thematic, as well as just right out of the gate, an alternative to grabbing the two-player core set. You know, so many of us, like every one of us right now, for sure, started with the two-player core set, either the original Galactic Civil War one or the Clone Wars one. And well, it can be a fantastic way to dive in with a friend at this point. I think having one of the things we really wanted to do is have really nice entry points for players who, you know, are looking to dive into that Legion community and they don't necessarily need to split a starter with a friend or anything like that. Maybe they only want one of the factions from the starter and they don't necessarily see themselves. multi faction right out of the gate, which seems pretty fair. So these Battle Force single player starters let us give those players expanded content to be able to dive right into the game quicker in a very thematic way that also reduces some of the complexity when you're just getting started because using a smaller subset of stuff you get some cool thematic benefits and they just let you dive right in and start going okay i'm going to mix in just a little bit more my light here. I'm not doing a whole lot of tube brushing here. I'm kind of just doing some pretty classic edge highlighting because this Yoda's face has quite a lot of solid sculpting detail. Of course, when I make a mistake or my spot gets a little too much, I can always go back in and just blend it out. Or if I do that and totally screw up, Oh, yeah. You'll never know. Caught on camera. But not on the final mini. Kind of like come in. These little colors. Just really want to make sure that contrast on the face is really pushed. Really overemphasize those features. And Again, just taking a very kind of more painterly approach to it. Not worried about hiding my brush strokes or anything as much. Looking for good blends, but not smooth blends necessarily. I want this mini to really kind of feel like a painting. So we're just kind of developing that style for myself. Never done this before, but I will admit I'm super enjoying getting to be a little, a little more like, I don't want to say messier, but a little more abstract in how I'm doing my blends and doing my mixes and doing my brush strokes getting to this kind of like finished product where it kind of looks like this Yoda jumped right out of a piece of command card art or upgrade art in my head even though I don't have it on me right now I'm really thinking of the artwork that Preston did for the new sense card for X-Wing Extended which is a really great profile shot of Yoda on a command deck with his eyes closed doing some forcey stuff. And there's this really nice 
great painterly aspect to everything that's going on there, and that's kind of the, the inspiration I'm keeping in my brain pan as I go in and slap color on this boy. Perfect. <laughs> yep, so Battle Forces will be available online via print and play. And then there will be Battle Force products specifically. Uh, one player starters for folks to utilize. Okay, now I do this. Oop. A bit of this. Nope. Let's just go in a little bit of that. Okay, so I'm gonna do the under jams here really quick. So we have eight minutes left, we can do this. So I'm going to just let that wash be the darkest color here. But otherwise, I'm just going to kind of go through really quickly because A, I'm running out of time, and B, because of his pose, these little like his under tunic, his underclothes, I don't know, his jammy jams. I just I cannot get away from them being jammies. They just feel very jammy-like to me. I think Yoda's, Yoda's a Jedi master who establishes good comfort. You know? I mean, he mostly works from home since his home is a Jedi temple and he only goes out to visit his Wookiee friends whenever, you know, the relationship needs to be restored. So, I imagine, like, some of us over the course of the last couple years got used to wearing our athleisure wear. This is like Jedi athleisure wear, right? Right? Right. As long as I don't look at the chat, nobody can tell me I'm wrong. That's the secret. Just forge ahead blindly with your crackpot theories. A little really bright spot highlights just to get that extra little contrast in. There we go. Yeah. That come into these folds a little bit. Those out so they're not quite as harsh. I'm gonna get the little collar right here, tiny bit right there, a little bit right there. Not too, too much there though. There we go. Cool. Okay. Let's get the fingernails. I can never remember if his nails are nail colored or if they're black. I think they're, I think they look like fingernails though, if I remember correctly. It's always so dark on Dagobah. And I'll be honest, I don't particularly pay attention to Jedi fingers in general, so we're just gonna, for the moment, because it's really easy to go back, say that he's got the bone colored style fingernails. And they'd be kind of grimy and dingy anyway, so it's fine. Did I? I mean, I, I only remember his fingernails when he pokes Luke in the chest, and I was like, oof. It just looks like his fingernail is about to pop off because the way he puts the pressure on it always creeps me out as a kid. I was like, oh my gosh. One of my biggest fears in general is, is having a fingernail tear off. Like, 
Like, there's a lot of things I can stomach, not that. Oh, oh, just thinking about it gives me the willies. I don't like it. All right, let's do this. We'll do some contrast on his hair because I'm running out of time. So now I'm cheating and we're going back to our old ways. And we're just kind of going to do a quick wash. Oh, mistake. Mistake gone. That's how you do it. Just go in and knock it out. Use that secondary brush, clean it out. I know his hair is not quite this jet black, but this is just going to be our foundation. Maybe it's, a, maybe, you know, maybe he dyed it. You don't want to go, you don't want to go improve relations with the Wookiees and look gray. You don't want to be a silver fox. What? Yeah. No, no, he uses, he, it's his own hair. Come on now, Summer. Come on. It's his own hair. Um, and then really quick, we're going to grab, not that, not that, not that. There we go. Okay. These two will work. So I'm just going to quickly, I'm not mixing any color because I'm out of time. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of ink tense wood. I know, I'm sorry. I'm going to grab a little ink tense wood. I just want to like get all the colors on this guy, even if he's not going to quite be done. So we'll just do that inner belt in that ink tense wood because it's a bit darker. And then we'll grab our sepia again and mix that with a little bit of the wood and we'll do that stick. And I think that'll be good enough. Oh, that's too light. Okay. Rethinking, rethinking, rethinking. Nope. Maybe. We'll try this. We'll see how this one goes. I think the staff, I think his stick might be a little more gray. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. We can work with that later. Just kind of knock that in. Get that color around there. Color around there. All right. Got a little bit of that green tinge to it, but that's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There. All right. I'm going to call that good with one last little thing. I'm just going to go in and use that sepia ink that I used before. I'm going to hit those nails to make them look grungy. Grungy. And I mean, the feet barely matter because we're, we got all sloppy around the dirt and stuff, but we'll just hit them anyway. And then once we base this guy, we'll get those feet better defined from the ground that he's standing in. It'll be all good. There we go. Yeah. You don't wear shoes, your feet are going to be real gross. That's the job nobody wants. <laughs> oh, I just want to emphasize. I just want to emphasize his closed eyelids just so they kind of stand out here. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. That's the money that Tom Cruise was talking about. And go back to our dark color really quick. Grab a little bit more of our black. Contrast here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, summer. Let me go over time. Just really want to push that closed eyelid here, even though. 
it wouldn't really have this kind of contrast on it because it's so in shadow. But I want to sell it. We want to sell it. There. All right. Yoda complete. Mostly. So I do need to go back and I need to finish the hair. I will add some colors and highlights to the belt and then I'll work on his little sticky stick. Um, but overall, for now, we're getting the tunic done, getting the overcoat done. And you can see kind of how we have similar colors there because we start with the same thing. Uh, but we have much more like neutral brown here. We have a lot more like ochre yellows in here. So we have that nice kind of differentiation of color. We could go in and mud splatter it and stain it and all that. Uh, really happy with how this turned out actually. Like I didn't really know what I was going to do outside of painting kind of a traditional Yoda. But then we went all painterly with it and we have all these nice brush strokes and it just looks very much like a good first attempt of trying to replicate a piece of art that we would see on a card onto a miniature. So thanks Dallas for inspiring me secretly about that with our conversations. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing more of this kind of style and just messing around with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, with that, I encourage you all to experiment, have fun, do weird things, try new stuff. Um, it can be really rewarding. You learn a lot of stuff. And if nothing else, it just gives you more tools for your toolbox. So today, first time I ever tried a more painterly approach with like harsher brush strokes and all of the kind of classic art things that you see on canvas. Uh, and it was a blast. So it was like super easy in terms of just being able to kind of like fudge all of those things that you normally spend a lot of time on and be like, yeah, this is part of the piece. Great. Uh, with that, be sure to join us again tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific. Dallas Kemp is going to be painting some Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff. And then he will be back with you twice next week, uh, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, and then Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I know Star Wars Wise, he's going to be painting the new mall from the Shadow Collective box, so be sure to check that out. And then there'll be some more Marvel stuff as well next week. Till then, have a wonderful next couple of weeks. I'll see you when I return from vacation. Stay beautiful and be good to each other. Goodbye.